There's certain things you can expect in life. Just Texas. Change. And Raw being garbage. Uh, plus, uh, unexpected poor pullout game. So, so, I had to learn that by first hand. Uh, of course, Raw was garbage. There was practically no, like, suitable, like, hype factor into the Rumble match. Hype factor into anything else going over the card. Already suitable dysfunction over the Hurt Business, even though they're literally, literally the most watchable thing you can put on Raw. Thanks to your decent, legitimate looking faction. That are competent, competent enough to pick up wins against Matt Riddle. The Retribution dumbass faction. Drew McIntyre. The New Day. And yet you have them already dysfunctioning around Cedric Alexander, Shelton Benjamin. Having a bit of an argument. I mean, sure, dysfunctions around factions early on happened before. But over most of what we're getting, it, it's already weak enough as it is trying to already break it up. That hopefully they at least wait until, at least until like near a year of being a faction. Or at least a year or two. I don't mind the Hurt Business. They're a long-term potential f a faction with the only main event player being like in his freaking 40s but still looking like a tank. So I don't mind the Hurt Business at all. They're great. Another decent thing over the show was, I guess, Alexa Bliss's match with uh, Asuka at the main event. That was her, like, suiting over clothing, her no-selling later on when she just turned into a Hot Topic chick. Orton with his burnt-ass face. I mean, it looked better than when, uh, if you don't remember, there was a, a, back on SmackDown Live years ago, there was this crap, like, bad tanning scene involving Breezango, was literally, like, looking like the skin is falling out. Freaking... Randy at least ha looks like he has like first degree burns or something that was taken away over re-watching the promo that they had earlier over in the show. Another thing that was garbage was Shane. I'm not doing this in order, folks. I'm not doing this in order. In chronological order if you actually think I actually care. We also had Sheamus against... Uh, we also had a promo with McIntyre finally returning over his COVID treatment. Taking him out of Raw for the last two to three weeks. Finally coming back, hyping over the factor of Goldberg, bringing up what, why he's so inspiring, his legendary streak. Him beating Hulk Hogan for the world title. Like, somehow he can't say WCW world title or something. Even though WWE has bought out the company nearly 20 years ago. Just saying. Either than that whole shit house, it gets a bit worse with Miz and Morrison coming over saying that it doesn't matter. Oh, correct. That one of you guys will be off guard and I will cash in. Well, technically, you don't have to tell him that because you can literally do it anytime you want, Miz. Other than your retarded ass doing it in a TLC match, not after the after the TLC match. You do it in the middle of the TLC match, making it a triple threat match. And people want to bring up that Miz is a, a Hall of Famer. If you do not j do half a backflip, while well, you will suffer an injury. Then after that, Morrison goes one-on-one -on -one with Sheamus. The match was fine. There was like a knee strike. White Noise gets the victory over constant counters from the outside. And it, he was selling over the factor of his leg. And after that, Sheamus won over just a white noise instead of, you know, the, the Celtic Cross or the Strode Kick. So I guess that was a change of pace. Then just like, no, no, we're going to have a one-on-one. -on -one. No, it was a handicap match. And that was just to bring the factor over to a fucking one -on -one. And no, It was a handicap match afterwards. After a bro kick, after getting out of the springboard kick... Miz sneaked on for a uh, skull-crushing finale to really sell the factor that he's an opportunist or some garbage like that. 
Even though there was no benefit, like, he was not putting the briefcase on the line. Sheamus was just fighting, even though they had reminders over accusations of him turning his back and then crossing McIntyre. Probably that all happened in the Rumble, but by God, it just feels so dumb. It feels like they're not competent to at least consist over character tr character motivations or anything on a three-hour program where you had three false, like, four to five false finishes in your freaking show. It was Shayna Baszler against Char uh, uh, Charlotte Flair, even in the opening contest, over another dumb interview involving Lacey Evans, Sugar Daddy, I mean, Ric Flair, be mentoring Lacey Evans. And obviously, it ends with freaking Charlotte Flair with Shayna Baszler one-on-one. -on -one. After Carl Bonin tie up later in the match, and like, I think it was like under 10, like um, already 10 minutes in, a f figure eight, Leg drop intercepts for a DQ. Six women tag later on after Mandy and Dana were coming in to help butt off the numbers game with Lacey Evans. So it became a six person tag. It kept going to strikes, strikes, kicks. That Dana can't get offense in because she sucks at it. Then it ends with freaking. A count out fin a double count out finish with Nia Jax not getting into the ring after she kept brawling over with uh, Charlotte. Then Adam Pierce just reverses the call over for the match to continue just to get the baby faces a finish. Feels like Oscar was such a minor character that we forget to just one half of the women's champions. I'd rather look at the beautiful people acting as grimy as... Because at least that was... There were three attractive women. You know they, they were the focus of the show. They have demeanor characters and they look important. Nobody looks important over that match. Especially when you had two false finishes. And this took up 38 minutes of the show. This is three hours. It'll drag enough if you make a match restart. Especially over a practicality that you could have just had on the next episode of Raw. But no, we can't do that because it, it, it'll feel like we're dragging out nobody. You guys, like, at least have under 30-something people on the roster. Why you have to drag it? We have Mace versus Xavier Woods out of something that, that could, they could have just had in the beginning of this whole retribution garbage. That Ali wants to get vengeance over Kofi's stupid ass push from 2019 because he suffered an injury. All right, fair enough as it is. So he's just gonna let the hatred fly out. If it's looking like he's like practicing over his freaking promos, I already had 38 minutes of Nia Jax. Now we have what looks like he's golfing, golfing around because he can't do a back and forth promo with anybody. And what happened with that ricochet garbage? Where Ricochet was literally jobbing out for like two months. Like, come on, dude. They can't, like, focus on a storyline. Congenial character motives, or at least types of, like, characters that you want to portray are really inconsistent. And I'm already, like, seeing dragged out false finish matches that have to be rematched to restarted. And there's no benefit... Or gain any of this. Other than that isn't fair. Even though Nia Jax. Nia, ba Nia Jax. Shayna Baszler get nothing to gain. Because they're all going to be in the Rumble match. So what's the point of just trying to get a one up. If you were going to book them to lose anyway. When they've been bitching. At Adam Pearce to start off the match. And then you have Xavier Woods. Coming around. Just finally beating. Slapjack. Great adventures of Slapjack. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Like, I'm trying to force myself to watch it. I can't, like, I, I want my three hours back. I, I'm, I'm going, when I, when I have subscribed from the network again, that possibly ain't going to happen because if you haven't heard that NBC, I think, I think who, who like CBS? Coming around, purchasing over the network for it to be on Peacock, another streaming service 
that's probably going to be as inconsistent as it is getting the network to work sometimes. Work. <laughs> wrestle over wrestle, drop kick. Xavier Woods had the upper hand. Lost in the Woods was the finish. Do 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 do. do. It was a joke. It was, it, it was a terrible. It was a terrible. It was a terrible Legend of Zelda joke. <sighs> Woods took. Woods beat Slapjack. That's all I gotta say, dude. All this was was built up over Kofi Kingston when he's back from injury. Sadly, he will not be appearing in the Royal Rumble where he usually does the most highlights, but uh, over the last few years, it's been kind of stale because it required him doing more group things. It's cha uh, it looked a bit more scripted because now it's a consistent thing and it didn't look that athletically charged. I mean, athletically inter uh, fun to watch because Kofi's a bit older. Then there was a backstage segment involving Charlotte Flair trying to talk to Ric Flair, trying to get his side piece out the room. I'm talking about Lacey Evans. So, yeah, Lacey Evans. Oh, by the way, Charlotte got to defend her tag team belts with uh, Asuka against uh, Peyton Royce and, La and Lacey Evans. At least it's a storyline, so I know it's going to be in the primordial show. If it was me, I'd put that shit in the kickoff show. I really don't care. Other than at least it's getting Lacey something to do. He's do going over holds and stuff in a subjective matter, even though, like, what, Rick Flair's pushing 70 while uh, Lacey's, like, probably a mother. A proud mother. Remember when she was babyface for, like, I don't know, for, like, a few months? Garbage. Garbage storyline. So. She thought it was cute. She's doing, she's doing this to prove that I'm, I'm the best, and Ric Flair's just doing this so, she, so he can be a mentor. And Le and Charlotte thought that she's not acting like a, like you act like an old man, and then Lacey gives her a woman's right. And then they, kick on each other like is that is it, is the women's right even a knockout finisher sometimes. It's inconsistent. At least a KO punch, like, we know that somebody's going to be out cold. It's a big man punching you in the face. I can understand how at least the KO punch can be suitable over a finisher. Lacey Evans is at least a tall-looking woman that I guess was a military veteran. But if that's the case, why not give her a submission hold? Call it the patriarchy or something. At least that's a double entendre. I can at least get that. Uh, AJ Styles against R Truth. Uh, this was over trying to be part of the Rumble match. Somehow Styles is like the t congenial gatekeeper, even though the mat, even though the roster has slimmed over the last m half a year. Don't know why they're making it like Styles is the gatekeeper. Like, oh wow, like Styles is getting our truth, Drew Gulak and Ricochet off the Rumble match. I hate stop. Like, stop. Pure God, stop. Calf Crusher was the finisher after getting away from the axe kick. There were some times where our troop was trying to maneuver away, but uh, escaping from the apron and all that jazz until, you know, Styles, I mean, Bodyguard came into play. The calf crusher was the finish. No one technically cares because there's no emotional investment. Nobody pinned our troop for at least some comedic backlash or something because uh, the stupid 24 7 title isn't that relevant. There ain't that many jobbers in the company, even though I would late, let even Keith Lee win that stupid thing. We even had the build build up over for the U.S. title shot for MVP. We had the Hurt Business doing their their VIP lounge thing, where it looks like uh, Cedric and Shelton are trying to suck up and try to outdo each other. And uh, the dysfunction caused our troops to get involved. 
Then the bicycle neon MVP. Where it's like, bro, I'm gonna be the US champion, bro. Like no other suitable charisma. Like it, it's just like god damn. Like I like I don't mind Riddle, he is a talented dude in certain cases. He doesn't give that many poor matches, but dude, it's just so crap. It's just so crap of character. So we have a gauntlet match. If if Riddle beats P, Shelton, and Cedric, he gets a title shot against Lashley. A future shot against Lashley, possibly on the pay per view, because it's this Sunday and they have did a shit job of trying to build up the rest of the card. Other than Sasha against Carmella for the women's for the for the SmackDown women's belt. The SmackDown Tag Team belts are not on the line. The Intercontinental Championship. Uh, no situation over that after Sami Zayn intervenes. So it's probably going to be a, a triple threat match. Nobody knows what's going on with the Raw Tag Team belts. Because surprise, there's no threats for the Tag Team titles. Because the New Day are injured. Ivor is still hurt. And of course, uh, Retribution are healed. So they're not going to bother with the group that they were jobbing through for the last three months from last year. And, of course, Goldberg versus Drew McIntyre. And then the two Rumble matches that I swear to God the women are going to have the worst problem. So, it started off with Shelton against Riddle. It was a decent back and forth. Uh, decent arm bars, knee strikes. Counter over a neck breaker. Then... Surprise win over by, by I think, ben, Benjam, uh, loss off Benjamin over constant arguments with uh, Cedric. MVP would come in and then surprise with a uh, count over a knee bar. I couldn't even know. I didn't even know they could use one knee braces. Riddle would beat MVP and then he would come over for Cedric. Decent back and forth. Lumbar check nearly got the three count. Riddle was crafty enough to at least maneuver all the members of the Hurt Business until finally uh, Lashley come beating the piss out of him. I mean, I don't mind the comeback story over, like, the retarded dude that probably, like, WWE thinks, like, outdated, half-baked skater dude, surfer, MMA guy with no no other character motifs and he's just like this disney ex it's like if you all remember the show zeke and looper that's matt riddle our main event was alexa bliss versus oh by the way we also had of course like uh the fun the the playground for alexa bliss where she was of course Watch rewatching Mac Orton promo over the recent burn of uh, the burning scars that he got from her in the last uh, like two a few like a few weeks ago, and then ref foreshadows over the fiend and what's gonna happen because he's probably gonna make a return come the Rumble or some garbage. Uh, it feels least climactic. I I don't mind the whole like she changed her old attire to like. Lolita, like, Hot Topic attire. She was no-selling moves. Even her, the Shining Wizard, Nearfall over Nearfall, so you knew something supernatural was going to happen. Asuka was completely in the disadvantage. So why not just have her lose clean and then end with her getting RKO'd by Randy? The bell didn't even ring, so it ends in, like, some false finish. It, it's just so underwhelming. It makes Asuka feel more like a devalued character. And this is over the positives that people gave her before. Like, Asuka... Already has to struggle over the langu language barrier. He's now getting overshadowed yet again over, like, Charlotte. Now having a storyline. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler eating out screen time with Mandy and freaking Dana Brooke. And whatever Alexa Bliss doing is practically more important. Like, there's, like, already so much stuff and you have to make it with two women's championship. It's better off you just have one and just have Asuka, like... Do something else. It's just completely worthless. It makes every belt feels worthless, dog. So that's technically all I have for the review, and this is shockingly more shorter than anticipated, because 
other than Goldberg and McIntyre, like, doing their moves on Miz and freaking Jabba Morrison, no other storylines at foot other than building over to the Rumble. No, still no build, even though you have three hours to do so. Not even showing vignettes. You don't do coverage over all the Royal Rumble events. It was great to see Edge do his little promo and go over what you still have to have a dream or else this world wouldn't be as magical as it is coming back and finally winning the belt. He hasn't won. Like, that was a, such a great promo. The only sad thing is that it's kind of odd that he kind of says that because the World Heavyweight title that he technically never lost since 2011, it hasn't been in any sort of active use since 2013, since it was unified with the world title back in December that year, or from Cena. I mean, he'll look uh, it'll look ugly when he holds the universal title because it's on SmackDown. And Edge and Roman is one of my matches I wanted to see, but uh, we'll we'll see through that. I I guess I don't really care. Orton coming back looking like a deformed stick and uh, the whole Alexa Bliss thing with the match thing was a bit interesting. Other than that, it looked a bit mad hokey. The show was complete garbage and it was just three hours. Like like Vince got to like open up and just see what's like captivating the viewers to watch consistently and how much it will boggle down from segment to segment. Do I really need to have these guys on television? Or do I really have to extensify this match to have two false finishes just to make it a six-person tag? So why not book that in the first place if you want to sell your pay-per-view? I I keep my my bl- my complaints on my, bl- uh, my pointing the finger on a minimal sense. Because there's many people. You have camera crew. You have writers. You have bookers. You have guys over backstage, obviously orchestrating the show. And yes, Vince has the final say, but there's other people that make the show work. So you can't just point the blame on, blame on the freaking owner that has to do mo- the most work to make sure this thing is still operational. Like, grow up. Stop blaming Vince. He's not a head booker. He's the creator of the whole shit. So that's all I have. It was up to me, man. If it was a ten out of, out of ten, ra- if it was a ten rating, I'm I'm just giving it a I'm just giving it a three, like complete three hours of waste. If you guys think differently, comment down in the comment section below. If you guys think differently, love to hear your opinion down below, negative or positive. All that matters. We're having a discussion. Other than that, oh God, I I wish I had my three hours back, dude.